In this video, we're going to look at the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, not in the full mathematical detail that we will in later videos once we've more fully jumped into quantum mechanics, but more from the perspective of measurement of physical properties of small objects and the consequences of it. So let's imagine that we have some electron that's floating out somewhere in some region of space here and we want to measure the position of that electron and we want to do it within a certain bound of uncertainty. So let's say delta x here is our uncertainty in the position of the electron. The electron is somewhere inside this box. So in order to measure the position we would have it interact with some photon which we could later measure. So in order to resolve the position of this electron the wavelength of this photon needs to be about that uncertainty in our position or less. So this delta x here needs to be on the same order of the wavelength of this photon which is f the distance from peak to peak here. So these two values need to be approximately equal. Approximately. Now if we want to have this measurement done again but we want delta x to be smaller now we have this range being smaller here and our light photon is going to have a smaller wavelength. So now lambda is smaller and our delta x now has reached a smaller value. But in order for this measurement to occur um, this photon has to interact with this electron to some degree and we know from the previous video about the de Broglie wavelength that light photons have uh, some momentum associated with them and that momentum is equal to Planck's constant divided by the wavelength. So as the wavelength is going down that means our momentum is going up and whenever the photon interacts with this electron it imparts some of it mo some of its momentum onto the electron and it's an amount that we don't know so this photon has a long wavelength and thus a smaller momentum so it imparts a little bit of momentum onto our electron and gives it some uncertainty for what the momentum of that electron is and then down here where we have a smaller uncertainty in the position where we have a wavelength we have a photon of a higher or smaller wavelength and thus higher momentum so it's going to put more of its momentum into the electron and thus the uncertainty in the momentum of that electron after that measurement is higher so it was Heisenberg who then noticed in the 20s and kind of dealt with this more fully he determined that whenever you have an uncertainty in a measurement in the position of an object and you have the uncertainty of the momentum that these two values the product ends up being greater than or equal to h bar the reduced Planck's constant so what are the consequences of this well this product h bar is very very small relative to everyday size objects so for macroscopic objects it it doesn't matter at all so doesn't affect macroscopic objects however for microscopic objects things like electrons orbiting around a nucleus and other systems it does affect microscopic so it's important for microscopic systems and most notably um, for the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom we know the momentum exactly because we had we said that there was quantized angular momentum in order to derive the expressions we got for the radius and for the energy so we know the momentum exactly we can calculate that we know the radius exactly so we know the position exactly at any given time we have a deterministic trajectory so the uncertainty in both of those can go to zero and that violates this this inequality here because this product can be less than h bar so in fact the Bohr model 
is inconsistent with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So the Bohr model is inconsistent. So in order to have a model which is consistent, we need a more general version of quantum mechanics. And that's what we're going to get when we start looking at the Schrodinger equation and actually start solving for the wave function of the electron instead of just um, having some hypothesis that there's quantization. The full version of how this is going to end up working out is going to be the Schrodinger equation and that's what we'll start uh, in a few videos from now.